Hey guys, uh, welcome back. I am, as always, Luke with Gingerbread Man Running Company, and today we are here to talk about uh, Hoka's Rincon. Uh, this is the second iteration of this shoe, the Hoka Rincon 2. It had a massive success after the one um, and became quickly a fan favorite. So uh, we'll touch base with this guy real quickly and, and check it out. Before we get into that though, uh, I'm gonna roll right into it. The one was probably the biggest surprise hit of 2019. It came out in August. Uh, we brought it in and we're, we're sold out of it within the first two months. And honestly, for a shoe that has no following, um, it's easier for a shoe that's been around, like the Clifton or the Bondi, that's on the sixth and seventh pairs. For a brand new shoe to come in like that and come in so hot, it was really kind of a surprise. Uh, it even caught Hoka off guard, and they had a hard time filling inventory. Their warehouses were completely sold out. They had to bring in extra shipping just because they couldn't keep up with the demand for the shoe. But that's not something you typically see. The uh, For the most part, it takes about three iterations of a shoe to kind of really start to dial it in with just the lead out time and the manufacturing time. Um, so to have a shoe kind of come off that hot really caught us off guard and we were kind of caught on our heels. The two follows up on where the one left off. It was basically a, a real hot shoe, uh, a lighter weight version of the Clifton. So if you're a fan of the earlier versions of the Clifton uh, that, that were a little bit firmer, that were a little bit lighter weights, the Clifton two, the Clifton three, this shoe kind of comes in where that shoe used to be and fills in a really nice niche. Um, the two is exactly the same on the foam. The only difference from the one and the two is that the one has, uh, the, the one had a little bit of a different foam through, or sorry, the one had a little bit of a different mesh through the top uh, and was a little bit looser up through here. So they tightened up the one slightly through the midfoot so you didn't get that gapping between the laces when you pulled it tight. So the two is a little bit snugger. That being said, it's still not a uh, still not a tight shoe. If you have a narrow foot, this isn't gonna necessarily feel like it's, it's, it's snugger, so don't be misled into thinking that. But it just fits a little bit more natural and it doesn't have that lace gapping that you sometimes get whenever you pull the laces tight. Weight wise, it comes in at 7.7 .7 ounces for men and only 7.2 ounces for women. Uh, by comparison, for most shoes, I consider under 10 ounces to be on like the lighter weight side. Seven ounces is obscene. Uh, it is very fast. It still has that rocker bottom, so that meta rocker where you kind of roll through the heel strike, uh, and it is firm, so it doesn't kind of let you get up on your toes as much, but it's still a shoe that you can use for speed work because it does have uh, such a lightweight base and can just fly through the shoe. Um, again, uh, firmness, it's a little firmer than the Clifton, so if you're used to the Clifton, this guy is just on the, the more firmer side of that. However, I, durability wise, it's not a shoe that's gonna get you to 500 miles. I'll be honest with you, um, Hoka for me has never been a shoe that I've been able to get a ton of mileage out of. And that's not a slight, you just have to kind of understand coming into the shoe that that's what you're getting. When you get an oversized midsole like that with this much EVA foam, as it starts to break down, you just kind of notice a little bit more. Um, the Rincon, like that, you're probably gonna get closer to 300 than 500. So that's kind of the only con I can really kind of come up to with for about the shoe. Um, just be aware of that and no one's going to lie to you getting into that. If that's the shoe that you're looking for, this guy hits all the other buttons, uh, but just durability wise, it's not going to get you to 500 miles. Uh, there's a lot of exposed EVA, not a lot of rubber protecting the bottom. And like I said, with that much EVA, as it breaks down, it's not going to get you the, the full distance there to the end compared to other models. But for Hoka, that's pretty standard. Um, Upper wise, it's got this weird little heel thing to help you pull it on and off. I think this is superfluous. I didn't like this, but it didn't necessarily bother me. Um, the upper is a little bit cleaner than the version one. I did mention that. It's not as nice of an upper as the Clifton or the Bondi. Uh, those guys are a little bit more dynamic. They have a little bit more stretch to them and can move with the foots. But the best thing the shoe has going for it is it's only $115. So the price point comes in a point where you're not really expecting the, the mesh to have to be super plush, super fancy. The shoe is a workhorse, it's a fast, lightweight shoe, and it's it undercuts the price of pretty much every other shoe out there. Um, there's still a couple shoes that come in at that 100 price points, uh, like the Launch and some other models, but this guy is very competitive against those ones. Um, other than that, uh, the mold of the foot fits pretty nicely. Um, you, I didn't notice any arch rubbing like you used to get with some of the older models, uh, and it kind of, again, helped you kind of snap through. 
My last caveat is I'm not a huge fan of this shoe for speed work, even though it is that lightweight, because it doesn't, with that meta rocker, I'm not able to get up on my calves and, and push off like you would doing intervals. It's more of like a tempo pace, an up-tempo shoe. It's still great, and it takes some of that impact off with that meta rocker, but that's just something that uh, I feel like you get a little bit more when you go towards that fly line that Hoka has with the with the mock and the the Carbon X and the Carbon Rocket. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, again, the shoe is a good opportunity for a daily trainer, someone that wants a lightweight shoe, someone that has something that is going to be super fast and uh, not necessarily looking for all the bells and whistles. Uh, that's pretty much the the long and short of it. Uh, again, I actually do like the shoe a lot. Um, it is a good tool for your toolbox that can be used in a lot of different directions. It can handle long runs. It can handle speed work. It's just maybe not the best at either of those. It's more of a uh, jack of all trades. Uh, but check it out. Try it on for yourself. It is a neutral shoe. So if you pronate, uh, it's not going to be as supportive as what you're looking for. Uh, check out the Arahi. Uh, but try it out yourself. Come to our store. Try it. Try, your own try it at your own local shoe stores. Regardless, just shop local. Um, as always, thank you for watching and viewing. Um, please like and subscribe. Send us any comments or other models you'd like us to check out. And as always, thanks again to Brandon for that painful music uh, for the intro and outro music. And I guess I'll see you guys out there. Have a great week. Thanks, guys.